Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Inside Artesian Basketball here on WREP 15 Sports. I'm your host, Eric Meyer, joined as always by Artesian head coach Kip Staggs. A couple of games to talk about, looking at highlights from last week and a couple of games to look ahead to as Martinsville has another doubleheader weekend coming up. Martinsville on Friday night traveled to Bloomington South and battled the South Panthers. We'll talk with the coach about that contest. They came back on Saturday night to the friendly confines of the John R. Wooden Gym, pick up a win over Providence, Cristo Ray, and then like we said, coming up this weekend. Martinsville, a couple of games as well. Friday night, Mid-State Conference matchup, Franklin. Saturday, Indianapolis Met comes to town. Coach, let's talk first about the Bloomington South matchup. You travel down to South High School to battle Bloomington South. The Panthers, a ball club that uh, very good, played very well this year, ranked in the state of Indiana. Their losses to number one ranked Newcastle, also to New Albany as well. This is a game that kind of got away from you guys a little bit there in the first half of play. Second half, really even, you outscored them. But that first half of play, tough to overcome, especially at South. Well, you know, we, we, I thought we played really hard. I thought we competed for 32 minutes. Defensively, we did a lot of good things. Uh, we were in the right spots a lot of times. Uh, you know, it's 13 to four in the first quarter, and uh, we missed two wide open threes. We missed a shot in the paint, and uh, you know we're in the hunt. And now they throw in a three at the end of the first quarter to make it 16 to four. You know, and, and it just we were not able to score uh, at, in the second quarter either. And, and some of it was to their defense. Some of it was we took some quick shots, maybe a little bit out of bounds. But in the first quarter, I thought we played fairly well. We just didn't hit any shots. And, uh, you know, we've got to be able to make those shots in big games. And you're not going to stop teams like that from scoring. You just slow them down a little bit. And I thought we did that for the most part. You know, like I said, it was 13 to 4, and uh, we missed a couple wide open looks. And then they hit the three at the buzzer. And, and then, you know, it's still 23 to, it's 23 to 8. Uh, midway through the second quarter and you know no, we're not out of it but we again we just can't get the ball to go in and uh, we got in a little bit of foul trouble and uh, but overall I thought our effort was pretty good uh, from top to bottom everybody contributed the best that they could from that standpoint but uh, we just did not shoot the ball very well so when you don't shoot the ball very well and then in the second quarter we turned it over a few times and uh, that didn't help us either. We knew coming into the game that it was going to be a physical matchup, and it was indeed a physical contest, especially there early on in the game. It was. You know, both teams were battling and getting after each other a little bit and, you know, getting held. And, and uh, you know, we, we just got to play through some of that stuff. And, you know, we've got to play with better poise and composure uh, so that we can uh, handle some of those situations. So when you get in the tournament, you know, we, we can kind of slow down mentally, not physically, but slow down mentally where you can accept what's going on around you and have a clear mind about what you're trying to do and not be rushed. You know, I thought we got rushed a few times and, and we didn't settle down really until uh, that second half. And, you know, second half, if you look at the scorebook, uh, we held our own and, and uh, did a pretty good job from that standpoint. But, you know, it gets a good team on the road. You can't get down double figures uh, and expect to uh, have a good result. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights from the game. We'll pick them up here in the second half as Martinsville is battling Bloomington South up there at the top. You got the scoreboard in our way. We apologize for that, but you see Jonathan Collier gets you on the board here. Yeah, we came out that second half and uh, uh, Beaver hit a three to kind of get us going. And you see Jonathan uh, able to knock a couple shots down here. And you know Jonathan shot the three pretty well here in the last uh, uh, month or so, and he's getting like. Like we've talked about before, it takes a little bit of time to get those football legs and it's starting to come around. Here you see Luke uh, knocking a three down top of the key. And, uh, you know, things start to settle in for us a little bit. Here's a nice steal by uh, Damon. He kicks it out to Luke and uh, on a fast break. And, you know, we've got to be a team that can play uh, at two speeds. And uh, for the most part, we do a pretty good job in a full court. And we still got to do a better job in the half court and be able to execute and convert. You know, that's where we struggle a little bit at times. Here's Jackson getting one to fall in. And, uh, you know, Jackson's another one of our better three-point shooters. Here he is in the paint with a turnaround jump shot to his right shoulder. And so Jackson's selling a little bit of, uh, uh, not creativity, but his diversity in, in terms of what he can do on the floor and uh, get him to rebound a little bit more and it'll be even better for us. But, you know, second half, uh, you know, we got, we got in a little bit of routine, played much better. But 
uh, just dug ourselves too much of a hole. What are some of the things you try to take away again from a game like that, or is it just one of these things, hey, there's some weird things that happen in the contest, let's just move on from here? No, I don't think we move on. I, one thing we talked when we got back was the simple fact of composure and poise. We just didn't play very well the mental aspect. I think the mental aspect really hurt us in the first half. And in the second half, you know, we just settled down. And But, uh, you know, we, we got rushed. We got a little bit out of sync. You know, we were trying to see how they would switch defensively, but we had shoot it so fast because they sped us up that we really weren't able to determine how they were going to switch on a, on a guard to big type of uh, screen action. And so we talked about that. And, and we've just got to be able to duplicate for 32 minutes, what we did in the second half with a sense of poise and a sense of composure. Came back then on for Saturday night against Providence, Cristo Ray. Uh, you guys get out of the uh, the shoot really well. Get out running a little bit, hit a bunch of shots, get up early, and all of a sudden Providence, Cristo Ray uh, hangs around a little bit, comes back, and it turns into one heck of a ball game back and forth until you guys are able to pull it out at the end there in overtime. Well, absolutely. You know, we, we got off to what we felt was a pretty good start, and we played pretty loose, and we were playing hard, and so that was fine. They had a young man hit three threes in the first quarter. It kept a minute, and uh, we had to change our defense a little bit in the second quarter to slow him down, which we were successful doing. And uh, But we really weren't ever able to, to pull away or to, to move in a direction where, you know, we got a substantial lead, and credit to them. And uh, we had to fight through a little bit of adversity of our own uh, during that stretch. But you know, it turned out to be a really good game. And then, as you mentioned, we get to the fourth quarter and we get a, we get a four, six, seven point lead and we're kind of hanging in there. But then we had two costly turnovers there in the last minute and a half and gave them an opportunity to, to, to make shots, make plays, and they did. Uh, but to credit our guys, I thought uh, Jonathan Collier and, and Reed Staggs did a really good job in overtime to uh, uh, carry us through and uh, help us get the win. Obviously, you don't necessarily want to go that route and tend to have to go into overtime to, to see where you have a chance to come back at the end. But in the same token, these are experiences. You talk about experiences, and at some point, you guys end up, you're in that situation. You're able to execute, so that's going to be an experience these kids are going to be able to draw from should they get into something like this later on. Well, exactly. So they played us man-to-man -man the majority of the game, and then we get to the very end of the overtime, and all of a sudden they come out in a 2-3 zone. So we had to quickly adjust. We tried to run a play, the ball got deflected out of bounds, went back with the second play, and then we were able to get Jonathan off of a ball screen and he shot a, he hit a big little 12, 15 footer there to, to put us in that position to win the game. So, you know, those are key plays. Uh, it doesn't uh, magnify itself in the, in, the, in the big picture, if you will, but those are key plays down the stretch. You know, the two or three turnovers that we had, the execution, you know, we can build on those kind of things. In the game on Friday night, I thought it was a physical contest. I thought Saturday's game maybe was even more so physical in the fact that the officials really let them play a little hands-on. You saw a lot of bumping and grabbing if you play in the summer. Depending on who you get as the official, that's usually how it's called. But I just thought it was a little bit, you had a little bit of some bumping and grabbing and you guys had to kind of respond to that in terms of how to play through a very physical, physical, hands-on, pushing, grabbing type of game. Our guys were tired. I'm telling you, on Saturday night when we got in the locker room, they were really tired. You know, usually after a win, everybody's spirits are high and they're up and those kind of things. But we had exerted a lot of energy on Saturday, and then we had to do the same on Saturday, uh, Friday and had to do the same on Saturday to pull out the win, and our guys were really exhausted. And, uh, you know, there's two ways to look at it. Uh, you're proud of them because they exerted that amount of energy and and had to, and they maxed out what they could do. But at the same time, it just shows you how physical the game is. And you know, you're gonna to have to play in that scenario in the tournament. In the tournament, they're gonna to let you play and hold and grab and those kind of things. And so we've gotta get accustomed to that. We've gotta get used to those types of, of uh, possessions. And we gotta play with a sense of toughness. We gotta to play with a sense of poise. And I thought we did a much better job of that you know, in the, the game on Saturday. And, and we could have easily folded. You know, when, when they went overtime, they had all kinds of momentum. They felt good about things. And, uh, you know, you could see some frustrated guys on our side. But we kind of held it together. Uh, we rallied. We made a few plays and uh, pulled out the win. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights of the victory against Providence Cristo Ray on Saturday night. And, you know, well, Pro you yeah. know Providence Cristo Ray, they're, they're a – they're a quality team, you know. They had a winning record coming into the game, and 
you know, they've got some, they've got some quickness. They've got a little bit of size. Now here's Jonathan driving in and putting it on the floor, a little spin move and knocking it in there. And, you know, we're getting our post and, uh, there's Luke hitting the shot out on the left wing. And, and like you said, we got off to a good start. Uh, here's an, here's a defensive rebound. We push ahead and now looking and, and, uh, Luke, Luke's really good when he can play in that full court, you know, and it's seven to three right here. And Jonathan's able to, to knock this three down, but then they respond, you know, they come back and they hit a couple threes. You see a fast break opportunity there where, where uh, Tyler gets loose in transition. Here's a steal and uh, Luke gets out and is able to, to score the ball there. And so it's just, we just traded baskets during this stretch. We, nobody could really stop any to each other. And there's Jackson with a nice drive, one dribble layup. You see him driving hard to get back on defense. Uh, here you see Blake going hard to the basket and finishing. And so, you know, we were able to get that two or three point lead and then they would answer. And as you see here, they're able to take a lead. Nice bounce pass by Luke to, to Jonathan for the finish. They tried to press us a little bit. And, you know, we just continue to exchange baskets and it was a good little high school basketball game. And, uh, you know, here we go running a little flex action and Jonathan on the curl. Uh, and Jonathan's pretty good on balance. Uh, in those scenarios, there's Jackson with a, a drive similar to what he had in the first half. And again, we're just able to trade some baskets. Uh, here's Reed on a nice drive to, to help us get the lead at that point in the game. Uh, here's an out of bounds play that we ran that was really designed for a post up for somebody else, but they overplayed and Reed was able to recognize it and get to the basket. Another drive by Jonathan. And, uh, you know, we're off running here a little bit. Uh, Reed's able to have a little patience, get in the paint, and uh, score the ball there, and it gets us a five-point lead. But then they come back and hit a three. Nice pass by Blake. We ran a little high screen roll. Jackson rolls in there. And, uh, you know, one thing that this team does a pretty good job of is that we do share the ball. Uh, we're a pretty unselfish team from that standpoint. And, uh, you know, we usually make the extra pass for that guy to knock it down. And there's that was a huge shot by Luke. You know, it's a one-point game. Uh, here's that ball screen we talked about when they changed defense and went to zone, put us up one. Uh, here's a little set play uh, that we run here. Reed gets uh, kind of hung up. He's looking for Jonathan on the curl, looking for Luke coming off the three. Uh, they were covered up and he was able to make the play of the basket. Unfortunately, it went in for us. So, you know, you don't want it to go down in the last second, but, you know, proud of the way we executed a few things down the stretch. and able to make that uh, make that win come out for us. Yeah, it was a game, like you mentioned, that you guys would, couldn't just quite pull away, give them some credit. They came down, hit some circus shots, hit some big shots that kind of kept them in it. They felt good after a while, and so that gets you playing a little bit better. And um, But it was a game where you couldn't quite pull away on several occasions. You have a five-point lead. They come right back and get things. But that back and forth again that you hope eventually these experiences, they help you down the road as you get ready for tournament time. Well, and another thing, too, is they hadn't played since like December or January 10th or January 7th. And they'd had about a 10 or 12-day layoff. So this was their first game in, in uh, over a week. So they had fresh legs. They had a lot of energy. They were here at 4:45. I mean, they wanted to play. I mean, it was their game. They hadn't played in a while, and so you know, we're us on the other hand. You know, we played last weekend. We're on the road. We played last night, the night before. Uh, had really good week of practice, and so you know, those factors, you know, they they play they play a role in how this all comes about too. So you know, so for us to play a hard game on Saturday, even in the loss, play an even tougher game or a tough game on 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 Saturday, two nights back to back. Uh, you know, it's, that's a testimony to our kids and the character of our kids, be able to hang in there and play through it, have some perseverance, uh, not lose sight of the goal, not lose sight of what you're trying to do, and uh, we're able to pull out the win. So I'm proud of them from that standpoint. Like I mentioned, they were really, really exhausted when we got in that locker room. That's going to be now experience to pull from like we talked about because you're going to have to do the same thing again this weekend. You've got Franklin coming in in a mid-state conference matchup on Friday. Indianapolis met on Saturday. Let's talk a little bit about the Franklin Grizzly Cubs. This is a group that your guys are familiar with, you're familiar with when Reed was over at Franklin. The fact that these kids, a lot of these kids played together. So you're going to have some familiarity there with some of the kids. They've got obviously some other kids that they've put into the mix. But what can we expect? out of Coach Dickey's ball club on Friday night? Well, they're, uh, you know, they'll run when they need to, but they're a ball control type team where they'll get in the half court. They want to play in the half court set, trying to slow the game down a little bit. 
Uh, they'll play majority of man to man. They'll run a little flex action on the baseline. Uh, Corey Richards is a nice player for them. He's a junior, can really shoot it. They also have uh, Reese Thompson, uh, another guard. They're mostly guard oriented from that standpoint. They do have a, a big kid inside, the Byerly kid, who is a quarterback on their football team. And, you know, he's 6'3, 6'4, about 220, 230. And uh, so that he, he provides a little bit of size for them in the post. And, uh, you know, they've got some other guys that just play some good roles for them. So they're 9 and 5, 9 and 6 right now. They've had a good season uh, up to this point. And, uh, you know, they, they were in the hunt for the conference championship. So they've got to, they feel like they've got to come in here and get the win to keep their, their hopes alive. But we need to do the same thing. You know, there's plenty of conference games left on the table. And uh, this is one we've got to try to get. Do you approach this game differently with the fact that you know this is a potential sectional opponent, or how do you handle that? No, I, I think you, it, you, you're talking about four or five weeks later, so I think you go in with, uh, with everything you have to win the game. Uh, you know, we're just trying to, to get better as a basketball team, be successful night in and night out. And so from that standpoint, uh, we, we got to go in with a mindset we're not going to hide anything, you know, because between now and that first week of March, last week of February, a lot of things change. People kind of adjust. Uh, players get healthy. Players get injured. There's things that, that factor in in the next month or so. You don't know how the draw is going to come out either. So you go in with the, with the uh, ambition that we're, we're going to go in and win the game, and we're going to do what we can to win the game. Doing what you can to win the game, what are some of the things that you guys are going to have to do on Friday night to come out with a victory over Franklin? Well, first of all, I think we've got to we've – eliminate some of those dry stretches where we don't score. You know, we've got to be more efficient uh, offensively where we're, we're scoring the ball. Uh, we can score in bunches and then we can go in droughts. I mean, we've got to find some, some sort of consistency there to uh, balance that out. And then on the same, at the same time, we've got to make sure that we know where Richards are at on the perimeter. We've got to make sure we keep certain people in front of us. We've got to continue to defend. I, I think the good thing about this team, you think about last year, we gave up 66 points a game last year, and we basically have the same guys back. Now we're giving up 52 or 53. So we've done a much better job this year defensively. We've cut 12 or 13 points of what we give up uh, on that end of the floor. And at the same time, we've done a, a, a really a pretty good job of competing. You know, there was stretches last year where I didn't think we competed. Uh, I'm not saying playing hard, but I'm talking about competing. And so we've done a much better job from that standpoint. So that's put us in positions to win. You think about Decatur, we, had a, we were in a position to win. You think about Mount Vernon, it, you know, it's a three or four or five point game with two or three minutes ago. You know, you think about some of these games that we've gotten. We've put ourselves in a position to be successful. We just haven't gotten over that hurdle in some of those games. You know, you think about Plainfield, we got over that hurdle. You think about Providence, Chris, we got over that hurdle. But our defense is what kept us in the game when we had those droughts. And even at Bloomington South, you know, even though it was a, a double-digit loss and we were really out of it uh, for the majority of the game, I thought our defense kept it from going, you know, from 12-15 to 30. You know, we, we still continued to compete. We continued to, to battle and try to get better. And so credit our guys from that standpoint. So for Franklin, uh, we've got to compete. You know, we've got to make sure we defend and we keep people in front of us and then eliminate some of those scoring droughts. And you'll come back on Saturday as well. Friday night, um, you'll have some things going on before the game. You want to talk a little bit about what we'll have Friday and then we'll get to Saturday. So, right. Uh, so on Friday, we're excited. We have a Morgan County Special Olympics, and we've not done this before. And they're going to uh, have a, a group of young adults uh, that are going to play a basketball game against Johnson County Special Olympics participants. We're going to do that right at the end of the JV game, so approximately at 7 o'clock, give or take. We're really excited about that. We think it'll be a, uh, a nice event, uh, creates awareness. Uh, it helps uh, everybody involved, and, and w so we're excited about ha hosting that event. And then, uh, you know, also uh, uh, in, during the evening, we're going to have at halftime, we're going to recognize the girls' golf team who won the – uh, superintendent's trophy for the highest GPA. Uh, their team GPA was 3.92, which is just, just outstanding. Not only did they win the sectional, but they were awesome in the classroom. So that'll take place at halftime. The dance team's going to perform at halftime. Uh, we have a, a check presentation as well from Duke Energy. So there's a lot of good things uh, going on in that game on Friday 
somewhere in the middle, there'll be five guys playing five guys from both teams. But, you know, there's a lot of neat things going on as well. And we're excited about that. Saturday is also going to be a big night at uh, John R. Wooden Gym as well. Well, yeah, so Saturday night is Little Artie's night. And so, you know, Friday and Saturday, there was a couple things in there that have been rescheduled. So, excuse me, the Superintendent's Award trophy was supposed to be given at the Plainfield game, but somebody turned the lights out on us, <laughs> so that, that had to be postponed. The Little Artie's night was supposed to occur at the Bloomington North game, but obviously that got postponed due to weather. So we've kind of squeezed a lot of things in here this weekend to make it all work. But the Little Artie's night will be on Saturday, but we're also going to honor Ken Roden and his service for – 46, 47 years of, of uh, working with Martinsville youth and uh, multiple volunteers and, and you know, just that little artist program is actually it was the bitty ball program when Sam Alford tapped Ken to run it uh, back in 1971. So we're going to honor Ken and uh, the mayor is going to be here. Uh, representatives from the state legislature will be here. Our board of directors from little artists will be here as well. And uh, so that's going to be a really nice evening. And, and again, somewhere in the middle, uh, we'll play a, a absolutely athletic uh, Indianapolis Metro team. They've got a young man at 6'7 that can jump out of the gym, and he's really, really good. And they've got some other guys that have some quickness. So, you know, it'll be, a, it'll be quite, a, uh, quite a game for us, especially after the game with Frank on the night before. I know you guys focus on the weekends, always that Friday night game, especially with the Mid-State Conference foe. But like you said, you mentioned the player from Indianapolis Met. What are some of the other things that we're going to expect? maybe out of them coming up on Saturday night as well. They're going to press. They're going to get up uh, in you. They're going to play, uh, you know, full court basketball. Uh, very different from Franklin. Franklin's going to be more than a half court. Matt's going to be uh, full court and, uh, you know, try to create some havoc, try to create offense off their defense. So we're going to have to make sure that we keep our turnovers down and, and share the ball, maintain poise and composure, as we've talked about, not get rattled, and, and, uh, and but also score, you know. Uh, you know, attack with a purpose of, of getting to the rim and, and making an extra pass. It'll be, a, it'll be a more of an open court game, I anticipate, on Saturday, where on Friday will be more of a half court game. All right, big weekend coming up. Coach, we appreciate it. We'll see you there this weekend. Thank you very much. Artesian head coach Kip Staggs here inside Artesian Basketball. Martinsville, like we said, big weekend coming up Friday night. Have a lot of things going on. You have the uh, Special Olympics in between JV and varsity game. Martinsville and Franklin will be doing battle then in the contest about 7.30. And then Saturday, Lydia, Little Artie's Night also going to be honoring Ken Roden there on Saturday as well as Indianapolis Met comes to town. As always, I'd like to thank the head coach for coming in for Kip Staggs along with the advanced broadcasting class who produced it. I'm Eric Meyer. We'll see you again next time inside Artesian Basketball.